we're talking about heart valves today. And so heart valves are tissue slash leaflets that are located in the heart. And the main function of those leaflets are to provide unidirectional flow of blood through the system. There's, there's a systemic circuit and pulmonary circuit in the body. And so there's, fain, there's four main types, the mitral, aortic, tricuspid, and pulmonary, as seen here in the right. And so when you look at the classification of the structures for these heart valves, you'll notice different compositions, such as collagen, elastin, and glycoaminoglycans. And so in particular, this gives it the viscoelastic properties of the valve. You also notice within the heart, some larger support structures, including the chordate tendinae, since these valves, they're attached uh, to the chordate tendinae. It allows it to, gives it, give it more structure. And that these chordate tendinae also attach to papillary muscles in the ventricles. And so you won't want your heart valve to function for a long time. But uh, there's a lot of factors that go into why it might wear down. One of the main factors being stenosis and regurgitation. And so from these main categories, you have other ramifications that include endocarditis, uh, which is a bacterial infection in the heart, connective tissue disorders, uh, rheumatic disease, and calcification. And so because of the, the way the heart works, the aortic and mitral valve is usually the most affected since you have this pumping action in the systemic circuit of the circulatory system, the left side of the heart receives more pressure usually. But it can affect any other type of valve, including the tricuspid and pulmonary. Some current treatment modalities that are used to address uh, a disease a, a valve, in particular aortic valve, could include mechanical, bioprosthetic, and donor tissue. And so for today, we're remodeling a diaper trifecta GT8 heart valve. But you can notice here to your image on the right, um, other types of valves that came before our prosthetic valves. And so one of the predecessors include the cage ball, which is basically as it's shown, it's just a ball in a cage. And so there were pros and cons with this. Um, one of the pluses includes that it provided really satisfactable blood flow for being the, one of the early prototypes but then involved other complications such as lysing of hem uh, blood cells of hemoglobin and accelerated clotting. So you don't want that on your device. And so the further developments through the monoleaflet and bileaflet mechanical heart valves, which are made of um, pyrolytic carbon to prevent uh, clotting onto the device. And so for biprosthetic heart valves, they're usually taken from porcine or bovine tissue in animals and they're sutured together or sewn together in a way that simulates the, the native shape. So for today's design, we'll be looking at the average trifecta. If you notice to the images, such as these, it has a scalp design covered in polyester covered titanium, which gives it a shape. And I've done some research and actually this is, um, there's a lot of iterations with this design, a lot of continuous improvements going on as early as 2007. So today we'll be modeling something close to the 2020 design. It does not include the, the new holder or the holder for the for the heart valve. So I think the holder, what it does, it allows it to retain its shape since this is composed of different tissues sewn together. And this is information available online uh, with the different specs. And this will be the model that I've been designing. So from here, let's jump over to SolidWorks. And so this family tree will allow you to see the progression of the part as it's being made from the earliest to latest features are parts incorporated. But there's, the first thing you wanna do is start a new part.
comes to my favorite part, which is basically applying material and color properties. So then we just pop over to the preview window. So once you're satisfied with the preview window screen, you can go ahead and initiate the final analysis render. So now you notice once you have your finished your render, this would be the window space that you would have with your output and save your image. That's pretty much it for this session. Some key takeaways from this session include learning how to do splines, learning how to split bodies, how to create curve journey functions, which is a new feature to me, and how to eventually make this presentable using rendering options. I include edit appearance and edit some features. If you like it, please like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.